What's going on guys, Town back here, and today we have a lot of updated news for the new DLC in Battlefield 1, They Shall Not Pass. Hmm, Gandalf, you making an appearance, man? I hope you are, I hope you are. But anyway, so I'm just going to quickly go over the new information that we currently have. I will leave a link down in the description below if you want every little glaring detail, which, is, granted, it's not much, essentially. I'm literally reading this off of the Battlefield page, essentially. So, but I wanted to, I'll be showing some pictures up on you know, the screen there to show you exactly what I am talking about at each point. And then after I cover each point, I kind of want to go over my thoughts about it, you know, because a lot of people, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to things like DLC and everything, especially things like dividing your player base, you know, is it too expensive? You know, are we asking for too much? Should this have been in the game already and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get into that at the end of the video. I don't want, this isn't going to turn into some kind of 20 minute video, but I just want to kind of get into the details itself and then we're just going to go from there. So first off, we're going to cover the four new maps that are going to be in the in the uh dlc and i am sorry if i butcher some of these names this dlc is uh going around the french army the french army is being introduced into this dlc if you didn't know so a couple of names and things like that are definitely going to be in you know French and I'm just gonna be like uh I think it says this so I'm again sorry if I butcher some names so yeah let's get to it then so the first map we're gonna get is Verdun Heights now Verdun Heights kind of reminds me of one of the maps from Vietnam DLC back in Bad Company 2 if you remember that and basically the summary says the uh opening barrage of the Battle of Verdun created massive forest fires in which players will fight for domination it's an uphill battle towards the massive fortress of Verdun there's some more talking about it and everything and some a little bit more writing but nonetheless the map definitely looks nice it definitely brings that kind of trench-esque to it uh it's got a few of the bunkers and everything that you've probably seen from a couple of the other maps you know which we expected from something in world war one obviously so it definitely looks like a nice map in terms of how it's going to play out well i haven't seen what the actual map looks like in terms of an layout you know and things like that so kind of hard to say exactly what it's going to look like but I, th I think it's got some potential there definitely going to see some bolt action rifles in here you're definitely going to see a lot of people just kind of peeking over the corners especially with the fire you're going to use the smoke to your advantage probably so who knows maybe smoke grenades are going to become the new gas grenades of the game so let's just hope that they officially get you know start nerfing those gas grenades with this uh, new dlc coming in the next deal or uh, the next map is going to be fort vox i think is how you pronounce it uh it says the, basically if it says the big first engagement inside a fort during world war one takes place in the dark underworld of fort of vox so this definitely reminds me of like the close quarters dlc from battlefield 3 so all of you infantry fans out there yeah you're you're getting your wish right here uh this definitely looks like corridors and everything probably no vehicles you're probably gonna see just a lot of like bayonets and flamethrowers grenades and guns and that's pretty much it you know it's all cl it's close quarters at its finest so this could be a really good map this could be a pretty bad map i don't know because you know this does kind of scream uh oh please don't be metro 3.0 we've already had 2.0 in battlefield 4 we don't need it in battlefield 1 so here's hoping here's hoping it is a good map i have no problem with close quarter infantry combat but uh, this is battlefield guys let's open it up just a little bit here and let's not get the grenade clusters going just yet but then again we all know dice love their grenade clusters the only reason it was fixed in battlefield 4 is because it was given to dice la yeah thank you for saving that game i'm not gonna lie so uh the next map which definitely looks to be one of my personal favorites just looking at it uh is called uh, i'm gonna butcher this name too uh sosons i think is how you pronounce it i'll leave the spelling up there on the title you know like i said i'm sorry if i'm butchering the name and everything but basically it says it takes part in one of the biggest tank assaults of world war one oh yeah this spells vehicles written it says vehicles written all over it essentially so we've got basically a little town which a lot of you know obviously a lot of the buildings look like the same from other maps that we have there's a lot of green grass fields surrounded just by looking at the picture as you can see up on the screen so definitely going to be a lot of tank combats definitely good some good hills for snipers and a lot of close quarter combat the closer you get into the buildings which of course are destructible so you know don't stay in one place for too long otherwise you're going to get blown out of your hole essentially so it looks like a really it looks like a very beautiful map very very beautiful map and he even mentioned in here uh how it takes place on the french countryside in the early hours of a hot summer day only the thunderstorm is louder than the war hmm this is kind of interesting because we've had rain we've had fog and dice seriously toned down the fog in some of your maps and then obviously we've had you know clear sunny days but we've never had 
thunderstorms you know what does this mean is this just simply going to be a rain weather effect coming in and a couple of lightning strikes up at the top or we actually have lightning striking patches of grass setting a blaze or something like that we've had it in past games where you know you can take your blowtorch and you can light a field on fire so who's to say we couldn't have random lightning strikes coming down every now and then and lighting the outer fields on fire to getting rid of those pesky snipers out of there i personally think that would be pretty cool let me know what you think down in the comments below though that'd be pretty cool so and then the last map is rupture which definitely screams trenches to me so maybe we're finally going to get that kind of trench-esque map that a lot of people have been asking for so uh, according to the description though it just says in dire need to capture key bridges across the river the french find themselves back into the battle into battlefields where uh, poppies grow over a rusty wreck from previous tank battles so we're probably going to see a lot of tank car you know tank carcasses a lot of old canister shells and everything and you know that's all we really know about it but yeah i mean it looks it looks like a beautiful map all four i mean dice always nails down art and design you know there, there's no getting around that in terms of map layout though oh uh, yeah it's, it's been hit or miss and it's definitely some games but you know i have my hope i have my hopes up i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt i'm gonna say you know what all right the maps look good let's hope that you've brought in some other talent not just from stockholm because they definitely do go one direction, it seems. I feel like if you're able to bring in some other people, especially from Dice LA. Dice LA made some beautiful maps for Battlefield 4. So hopefully they can bring in some of that talent as well. So I'm really hoping to see what they can do with that. But it looks like a very beautiful map. And then, so obviously, then the next little part just simply says, as I mentioned before, this is the French army joining the fight. So we're basically bringing in the French faction. We have, you already have Germans, you have, you know, the English and everything. Time to bring in the French, wee oui, wee. Oui. So they have definitely, models look definitely really, really cool. So, uh, and, but we're also getting a new game mode called Frontlines. And it's an experience, a mix of conquest and rush, which is kind of weird because isn't that what operations is kind of? I mean, in my opinion, but as it basically says, experience a mix of conquest and rush as you fight for chain control points in a tug of war front line. Both teams fight for one flag at a time, and when the objective is captured, the action moves on to the next. Capture the enemy's headquarters control point, and the game turns into a rush style section where telegraph points need to be attacked or defended. So, sounds like it's kind of like operations, but then the actual rush part thrown into it? I don't know. As long as this is actually in the server browser, though, because honestly, the thing stopping operations from being my go-to game mode all the time is the fact that it is not in a server, you know, the, the, the servers, you know, it's looking down, looking through servers and everything, because right now it's just simply, it looks for the people around in my area, and unfortunately, if it doesn't, it'll put you into a lot of empty maps and servers sometimes, which is not very fun, they were supposed to have fixed that, I guess, with the last patch, but that didn't really happen, so, at least for me, though, maybe it's because I live in here in Japan, but it's kind of hard to say, so, uh, next, it seems like we're getting a new behemoth in the style of a tank, it says, pilot a steel behemoth, spawn in the char 2c tank and control an epic new behemoth based on the real world french tank this super heavy beast may turn the tide of the entire battle this definitely looks like something that either they had probably towards the end of world war one or that maybe was in production but never saw the day of the battle until you know at the very end or probably was more introduced into world war ii would be my guess but i'm not really sure i'm not a i'm not a history nerd or anything so but it definitely looks it definitely looks like a very powerful tank i mean if you're looking at the picture right now it's got can obviously the cans on the front and tons on the side you know plenty of armor and everything so i'm assuming though you're not going to be able to repair it because you know this is a behemoth and since you're already gonna be able to are allowed to drive it around obviously i mean this isn't you know the uh the murder choo choo this isn't the blimp or anything like that this tank can probably go around the entire map so of course you're gonna have everyone just turn their heads going fire on a boom you know kind of things like that so Definitely, definitely get out your AT rocket guns and start taking this thing down if you are fighting it. So, and then also we get an assault tank gun. It says the uh, Saint Chamond, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm probably butchered that name again. Sorry, but uh, was most heavily armored Allied tank of the war. Dominate the battlefield with this impressive French construction. Wow, this thing looks. 
Jeez, just run. Just run. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> but yeah, essentially it is, well, pretty big tank. It looks like it's taking kind of the place of the heavy tank just from the looks of it. I don't know if they're, if you're going to be able to pick from the heavy tank and this. You know, hard to say, you know, because it is going to be a DLC exclusive, it looks like. But, you know, who's, who's to say? I mean, it could become my new favorite. Hard to say. Um, it definitely looks like from the front, though, with that cannon, that beast of a cannon, I'm going to say. Uh, it's kind of angled in like this. So I'm wondering if, because if you know, if you notice sometimes when you fire rockets at tanks, they deflect. If you get, if you know, if you hit them at that, like the right spot, it won't do any damage. It's, you know, just deflects off of it. So I'm wondering if it's going to be smart to go for the treads on this tank instead. Because if you think about it, trying to aim at something like this, if you hit it, it's just going to go dink and just hit, hit it off the tank and probably not do any damage. So that will be interesting to see. I mean, going for the side as well, you want to take out those side uh, machines guns as well so we'll have to see exactly what happens when this drops in march and then next we get the trench raider elite class it says use melee weapons it's, oh sorry it says use the melee skills of the new elite class the trench raider with the brutal raider club and impressive grenade arsenal oh great really do we really need an elite class with grenades in a melee i mean yes i can see this being effective in a close quarter scenario but come on we already have tons of grenade spam in this game already do we really need an elite class that just bumps that over into overpowered and everything like really like i'm just gonna not want to go into that map i'm just gonna want to sit in the back corner until he's dead finally he's when i see that little uh reading pop up saying hey elite class killed and it's like oh finally so, I don't know. I mean, DICE's track record when it comes to grenade spam is not the greatest. So, we'll have to see exactly what happens. And then, finally, it talks about a new stationary weapon. Similar to the field gun. The field gun is the one that you fire off. You do that lengthy, long animation. You got to push the canister in and everything. It says, the, C the C's uh, howitzer can operate by an infantry player. This new stationary weapon is operated through indirect aiming slash firing in the same vein as mortars. Oh, great. Really? Oh, dice. Oh, what is with the mortars? Oh, I know. I know. It was in the war, obviously. You want to make it authentic and everything, but come on. Ugh. Okay, but you know what? You know, I can't judge it yet. I can't judge it yet, but I can't judge by dice's track record. But yeah, anyway. So basically, it looks like we got kind of a new mortar-ish gun. Obviously, this is going to be on the bigger open maps. This is not going to be, obviously, in that close quarter one, like in that fortress and everything. So we'll have to see exactly how it works. Is it going to be powerful? Is it not? I mean, you don't want to make the thing useless, but you don't want to make the thing blatantly overpowered that everyone's fighting just to go over it. So I don't know. Hard to say. Maybe, it, maybe it's a lot like the Dreadnought uh, shell and everything, but we'll have to see exactly what happens. So... And yeah, other than that, uh, we know that it's supposed to be coming out in March. We don't know when. So yeah, and premium players are obviously going to get, uh, you know, probably the usual two week early access and then everyone else can purchase it uh, separately if you don't have premium itself. So that is all the news for the DLC itself. Now, in terms of my opinion on it, maps look beautiful. Uh, again, I'm not the biggest fan of DLC like this, though, because, again, it splits your player base. And I understand the need to obviously bring in revenue because of the way that practices are done with games right now. But it really makes you wonder how much of this, if we had been back like seven years in the past right now, how much of this would have been in the game already? You know, yes, we do technically get the free DLC, but you can't, ha you can't help but think that sometimes, well, maybe that free DLC was originally going to be in the game. Game, but then you know whether it was you know i doubt it was the developer but maybe it was the company or maybe it was even the higher ups from that or whatever saying you know no no no, no don't, don't don't put that in say it's a free dlc bait them in a little bit you know try to get people in show them what we got and, and then they'll pay for the paid dlc kind of thing Ooh. so it's really really hard to say uh, I mean, oh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that they blow this DLC out of the water and it's really, really good and it's worth the money, obviously, and a lot of people will get it. But, I mean, it's it's hard to say. I mean, what do you guys think? Is nine maps what we currently have right now? Or it's either nine or ten right now. Is that enough to sustain us? I mean, we used to play games seven, eight years ago where we didn't get DLC. We would get the maps in the game and boom, that was it. I mean, I look at something like Bad Company 2. We had the uh online pass but that just simply allowed you to play online and then the rest of the dlc was all free 
But I mean, I remember a time where it took so long until I came out, we were able to sustain ourselves, no problem, to play that game for as long as we possibly could. But I don't know, no, is, it, is it the mentality of players these days? Do we just expect new things right out the gate all the time after like a week or two? Where it's like, okay, we played it, we're done. All right, well, next. Come on, guys, come on, hurry it up, hurry up. Is that why we have this thing? Or, you know, are companies just trying to take advantage of us? It's really, really hard to say. I, I don't know personally the right answer, so... I don't know. Hopefully this does work out, but you know, who knows? Maybe it won't, and maybe this will finally get, you know, if this one doesn't work out and the next one doesn't work out as well, maybe this will finally get them to stop doing this type of thing or do more of the free DLC route. Dudes, guys, come on, back of me too, a la style. Let's let's get it back to that. I loved that personally. Buy the game brand new, get the online pass, get the rest of the DLC free. Loved it. That was, that's where it was meant to be. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's going to be it for the video. Let me know what your thoughts down below about this DLC. Are you picking it up? Obvi I have premium, obviously, so I will be testing out. I'm going to bring you guys all the map layouts that I possibly can. I'm going over what I think about it. Should you even buy this to begin with? So, you know, hey, it was my money that I spent, so I'm going to see if it's good. And if it's not that good, I'm probably I'm going to tell you honestly. I'm going to be like, guys, don't buy this. There's no point. It's, you know, it's already dividing the player base. It is. Don't get it. The servers are going to be empty within two weeks. Or maybe it is really good. And I say, well, well, or you know maybe two of the maps are really good but the other two and eh, not so much so let me know down your thoughts your thoughts down below though in the comments leave a like if you like the video and do not forget to subscribe subscribe if you are new lots of more content obviously coming in the future and the days ahead of us so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next one